All right, well, Happy New Year. Man, New Year's is uh, it's definitely one of those times in the year when, when a lot of people start kind of looking forward to the year that's coming, looking back on the year that was, maybe putting some resolutions in place, maybe things they'd like to change or take up in the upcoming year. So it's really sort of a perfect time to talk about the reality that the God who made us, the God who came as a baby at Christmas to save us, the God who lived a perfect life for us, died on a cross to forgive us, rose from the dead to show us that no matter what will come in this life, He will always, always shepherd us. So today we're talking about this shepherd-sheep relationship that that all over Scripture, it says that God will have with His people. And uh, in, in Ezekiel, we get this look at a very personal piece of Scripture where God is making these incredible promises, incredible promises of what He's going to do for His people. I remember uh, when I was growing up, so, so there's myself, I got two brothers and a sister, and there was a project we were supposed to be doing, me and my brothers, and and I don't know if we were actually fixing anything or helping anything, but my dad, I don't know, wanted to guide us or show us. Anyway, so he kind of showed us what to do. We were getting it, we, were, we thought we were doing the right thing. I think we were messing it up. So there was this moment in the middle of the project when finally my dad came out and he goes, all right guys, get out of the way. Oh, I got this, you know. That's what this piece of scripture is. It's sort of that heart of God saying, this is so important to me that it's done well, I'm going to do it. 16 times in verses 11 through 16, God says, I will. Like, I'm going to do it. I'm not delegating it. I'm not passing this one off. This is so important to me, I'm going to get this done. Let Let me show you these 16 I wills. Ready? From Ezekiel 34. It says in verse 11, God says, I will search, I will seek my sheep. I'm going to do it personally. I'm seeking them, I'm going after them. Then in verse 12, it says, I will seek and I will rescue them from all places where they have been scattered. I'm going to do it. Right? And then verse 13. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them. I will bring them into their own land. I will feed them on the mountains of Israel by the ravines. I'm going to do it, God says. Right? We're only to verse 13. Just just listen for this personal nature of God. He's saying again in verse 14, I will feed them. And then in verse 15, he says, I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep. I myself will make them lie down, declares the Lord Yahweh. I'm going to do this. I'm not passing it off to kings. I'm not passing it off to presidents. I'm not just passing it off to the under shepherds of a pastor. I'm not just pat. No, no, no. I'm going to do this. This is so important to me, God says. I'm going to do this. And then verse 16 is the culmination of this whole section. Just one after another after another. He says, I will seek the lost. I'll bring back the straight. I will bind up the injured. I will strengthen the weak. The fat and the strong, I will destroy. I will feed them in justice. Meaning the enemies of God, those practicing evil, those who are against his bride, the church, the ravenous wolves that are coming after the flock, God's saying, I'm getting this done. Isn't that cool? It's one of my favorite pieces of scripture, you know, because it's just so personal in nature, really revealing the character and the integrity of the God we worship. Character and integrity is revealed in these pieces of scripture, and character and integrity is defined not just by what we say, but what we do, right? I mean, it's really easy to talk a talk. It's really hard to walk a walk, right? But in these verses, God is saying, I'm not just going to talk the talk, but I am going to walk 
a walk. So if integrity, the best definition I ever heard of integrity was not what we do when other people are watching us, but what we do when no one is watching us and there's no way we would get caught. What you do behind closed doors says more about your integrity, your character, than what you do in front of people. What you do when you know there's no way you'd get caught says more about your character and your integrity. I know right now this can be very convicting for some of you. But honestly, I think it should be convicting for all of us. But God has a perfect integrity perfect character. If God ever says he's going to do something, he always backs it up with a walk. And so the cross stands as the forever symbol of God walking the walk. He said he was going to do it, and Jesus came and did it. That's why we celebrate at Christmas. Because God walked the walk. He came to his people. He sought the lost. He brought back the straight. He bound up the injured, strengthened the weak. And then a day is going to come when Jesus is going to return. And he's riding a white horse with a sword. And he is bringing the righteous justice of God where once and for all, evil, sin, calamity, all of it is over and done with. All things placed in his control once and for all. All of this will be fulfilled. But we are also as God's sheep, sitting in the promises of God being kept because you're here. Or maybe you're at home. You're listening. There's something inside of you that's saying, I want Jesus. What is that? For those of you who have not always been a Christian, maybe you know a time in your life when you didn't have that feeling. Or maybe you were very stubborn towards anything that had to do with religion or Jesus or faith or all the hocus pocus. Maybe that was you. But yet, here you are. You're saying, I I don't know. I want this. What is that stirring? That is Jesus seeking the lost, bringing back the strayed, binding up the injured, strengthening. Like, we're sitting in these promises right now. It is so cool. It's so cool. So these verses are telling us of God's character. Now as we talk, though, about a shepherd and a sheep relationship, and that's what it is. It's a relationship between the God who made you and the God who wants to be with you. There are two things we need to highlight, and these are two things I've been I've been kind of picking up on, not only in my own life, but in the life of Christians, as two things that are kind of holding Christians back from a more peaceful, joyful, intimate sort of relationship with Jesus, okay? There's two things we got to talk about. Some of these might sting, but that's all right, man. I want, I, we need that crusty layer to break, okay? So two things. First one comes to us in Romans, and I want to share this with you. In Romans 13, Paul says, Let every person be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God. And those that exist have been instituted or given by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authorities resists what God has appointed. And those who resist will incur judgment. This one's tough. All right, so hang in there, okay? You made it in the negative degree temperature, so you're getting full blast sermon, okay? You deserve that. So, the way that we submit authority and leadership is a direct reflection of how we submit to God. If we struggle to submit to anyone telling us what to do, that will be a direct reflection of how we will listen to our shepherd because I'm guaranteeing you Jesus is going to tell you things you don't want to do. This last year has been revealing of that nature and character in the lives of everyone but also in Christians. Mandates, rules, boundaries, things from the governing authorities, and yet, in our heart of hearts, we're like, hmm, really? I don't want to do that, though. That goes against my personal comfort and rights, we say. Well, what happens when Jesus gives you something to do that you're not comfortable with? Like picking up a cross and following. I don't think it's comfortable. How about loving your enemies? Feel good? 
How about suffering for the sake of the kingdom? Doesn't feel nice. How about giving of your time and money and energy and talents for the furthering of the kingdom of God when what you really want to do is be watching a football game? What, what are you going to do? See what I'm saying? Now, I'm not, going, I'm not going to go to the nth degree and be like, if you disagree, that it shows that you... But what all I'm saying is, based on the teachings of Romans 13 and throughout Scripture, there is no authority that has been instituted that wasn't instituted by our sovereign God. He is the authority, and he places people in authority. Now, can people misuse their authority? Absolutely. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying, now listen, Paul wrote this when it was the Roman Empire. The Roman Empire. Read a history book. Not fun. Man, you think you get a bad president once in a while. Try a bad Caesar. All your personal rights, all your comforts under the thumb, and Paul's saying, obey them. Come on, right? We don't want to go so far in our individuality, in our comfort, and in what we think is the control of our own lives, that we, that we kind of step outside the bounds of what it means to be a sheep with a shepherd. Okay? So that's the first one, man. You've got to lean into that. You've got to ask yourself those hard questions. That's one. The second one is not just how we submit, but also our willingness to ask for help. Willingness to ask for help. This one comes up a lot too. Our willingness to seek guidance, seek counsel, seek something outside of just what's happening between our brains. Most of the time you get it where people will get into a dire situation, finally things are so chaotic, so this, then they might come and talk to you, but usually we still Google it before we go talk to anyone. Our our, our ability... Pride will hold us back from being vulnerable. So the ability to say, I don't know what to do. I don't know the right move. That I, I need some guidance. I need some wisdom. I, I, wanna, I need to seek something outside. I don't have all the answers. I'm not in complete control of my life. I'm not totally with it all the time. And if left to my own devices, I might just run this thing off the road. Therefore, God has placed things in our life to shepherd us, guide us, and walk with us. But if we're so stubborn and prideful that we'll never, no, I got this, I'll do this, I got that, I don't need anyone, I got it. That's crusty, man. You need Jesus to break that. That's not being a sheep. Right? The moment a sheep thinks it can do it on its own, it's most vulnerable to the wolves. You stray from the flock outside the realm of the shepherd thinking, I'll just forge ahead. I got this. The devil prowls around like a roaring lion seeking someone to devour. You are safe. Right? Aren't we in this safety conscious society now? Everything's about safety, safety, safety. Well, what's the safest place to be? With your flock under the guidance and protection of your shepherd. All right? So you got to pay attention to those two things. Those, two, those are big things. So as we walk through these next things of what the shepherd promises he's going to be doing in our life, we've got to keep those in the back of our mind. All right, so we're going to, I want to bring to you six different things a shepherd is going to be doing in your life, okay? Um, and so we're doing a little bit of a scattered approach here. So maybe if number one doesn't hit you, maybe number five, I don't know. But we're just going to go for it and see what the Holy Spirit has in store this morning. So the first thing is, is where we're going to start is that the shepherd gave his life for you. John 10, 11, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. I start with this one because the fact that Jesus laid down his life for you shows you that there is nothing that he's going to withhold. Right? Paul goes there. He always starts here in Romans 8.32. He says, He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? 
See, Paul always starts there because when life starts falling apart, a relationship, a job, something in this world, sometimes it's easy to look at that and then bring it back to the heart and character and nature of God and saying like, God, where are you? What's going on? I thought you were this. I thought you were that. I thought you were this. And we start peeling that back over the nature and character of God. So Paul always starts with the cross to say, if God did not even spare his own son but gave him up for us all, dude, he didn't do that to bring you into a relationship just to turn it back around and burn you. Like, that's not the nature of our God. But the goal of our God is to keep you close to your shepherd. Right? So you always start with the cross. No matter what comes up in your entire life, No matter what's happened in 2021, that cross still stands. You know, we got home from a a, a little New Year's family party, and we got home, you know, I don't know if it was like 11, 11.30, something like that. And uh, I've made it till 12 every year of my life, and I did it again. It was tough, but we did it. And uh, I wanted to watch the ball drop, and I think I was too late, or I don't know. But I turned on something, I don't know if it was like Hulu Live or something, but we turned it on. And they were doing this like seven minute special of all the things that have happened in 2021. But it wasn't like what happened. It was like every disaster of 2021. I'm like, thanks for the reminder. Like as we're walking into 2022 and it's like, hey, you remember all these things that happened? It's like, yeah, I do. And it was just this systematic thing that honestly, it can put you into a place where it's like either one way, I got to ignore it and just be like, well, the cookies are good. Or something. You know, you got to like, you know, like, well, uh, football game's on. And you got to like ignore it. Or it can get really overwhelming. But see, the cross stands and is a reminder that even through all the tragedy, God's love is still present. His plan is still working out. The cross stands to say God has not changed and will never change. And this is what his love did, was give his own son. Therefore, no matter what happens, you you can trust that God will be who he says he is, and that is your shepherd. Because it can be easy to mentally run that off the road. The second thing that the the shepherd knows you. He knows you says in John 10, 27, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. Man, how comforting is it to know that God, he knows you. He sees you. You've never had a thought, an inclination, or desire that God doesn't know. But again, remember that the goal of God is to keep you close to your shepherd. So it says in, again in Romans 8.28, and we know that for those who love God, God will work all things together for good, who are called according to his purposes. His purpose is to keep you close to your shepherd. Therefore, if there is something in this world that you really, really want, but that thing is not going to draw you closer to your shepherd, don't be surprised if God doesn't give it to you. See, it's not your purposes, it's his purposes. We're going back to the authority thing. You're not calling the shots on your life. He is. He's the shepherd. You're a sheep. As a sheep, as Christians, we need to get better at being able to submit to the authority of Jesus Christ in our life. You don't have to understand it. You're not going to get it. But that ability to say, God, I submit to you what you want to do in my life, that that hands-open approach. And and the hard part is I can't, it's really hard to teach a Christian that. The only way that you learn that is by being placed in positions of life where you can either take an anxious-filled control move or or submit and enjoy the peace and joy that comes from it. There's no other way. But he will work his purposes out. And so as a sheep, as part of the flock, one of the key questions you got to keep asking is, why do I want that? Why do I want the job promotion? Why do I want more money? Why do I want that relationship? Why? Why do I, why do I, why do I? Because that'll get at the heart. God knows your heart. Remember, he knows you. God knows your heart. 
So he's not going to give you something that will eclipse him as the thing you're going to go to. Like, for instance, if right now someone wrote me a check for $5 billion, you think there's a chance I might start trusting my money over and above God as the thing that provides for me, protects me, comforts me? Yeah. I mean, if you want to, if you want to write a check, it's fine. But I'm just saying that, no, I'm saying God, know, God knows us. He knows your strengths. He knows your weaknesses. He knows the things that could run your life off the rail. Maybe you're not ready for that relationship. He knows you're looking for it too hard. That will eclipse Him as the primary lover of your soul. God cares more about your heart than your context. And He'll keep us in context if it means He gets our heart. Because His purpose, His goal, is to keep us close to the shepherd. Right? And the other thing is that the shepherd will guide you. Let's read this verse together from John 16, 13. When the Spirit of truth comes, He will guide you into all the truth. For He will not speak on His own authority, but whatever He hears, He will speak, and He will declare to you the things that are to come. So Jesus is promising that He's not going to leave you alone. He's not going to leave you to your own vices, but He will guide you. He'll guide you in prayer. He'll guide you in His Word. He's going to guide you by the very Spirit He's put inside of you. And the Holy Spirit's not just going to speak out a turn or whatever it feels like, but the Spirit is hearing from Jesus and delivering that message to your very soul. How cool is it that Jesus is personally talking to each and every person that he's put his Spirit in? Right? I told you on Christmas Eve that I got my daughter these walkie-talkies. And so we'll walk around and we'll and she's got one and I got one. I can ring her and we can talk to each other. And it's like it's like you're just connected and all of a sudden, you know, she'll be off doing something. She's like, Daddy, you there? You there? And I'll be like, Yep, I'm here. And she goes, Okay. And then that's it. The Holy Spirit's like the internal walkie talkie of our connection to God. That at any time you can press the button and be like, Hey God, you there? And he'll be like, Psh, Yep, I'm here. What's up? And he'll be like, Oh, just making sure. Or whatever. You know, if we spent more time praying than we did Googling our problems, it would make a difference. If we spent more time praying than just like searching over social media, it it would make a difference. Like if I said to you right now, and this is maybe a touchy subject, but that, that eating well and working out will make a difference. Some of you are like, I know. Eating an unheard of amount of Christmas cookies will also make a difference. Maybe not the difference you want, though. Right? What I'm saying is, not a Christian guilt trip, I'm saying this in love. What I'm saying is, is that being in prayer, being in the Word, and listening to godly guidance and wisdom will make a difference in your life. Continually binge-watching shows, manic shopping, eating, drinking, whatever you want, filling the void with something else, and just following the course of this world will also make a difference in your life. It just might not make the difference that, you are at, that you're searching for. So God says, as the shepherd, I want to guide you to the good pasture land. I want to guide you to where you'll be at peace, be at joy, where you'll be with me. And Jesus promises to do that. Now that's going to go back to the other thing we talked about at the beginning of asking for help. Asking for help. The shepherd will guide us. The real question is, what do you need guidance in in your life? Where in your life are you feeling overwhelmed? Where in your life are you feeling anxious? Where's the place in your life that God's knocking at the door going, can I get in there? You've been holding me out for so long. I want to make a difference right there. Humble yourself. Submit to his love. Follow the shepherd. It makes a difference. It really does. 
And the, the fourth one is that the shepherd promises he'll sustain you. He says in John 14, 27, My peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives do I give to you. So don't let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. I remember last year I was out on a run with one of the girls we were watching, and um, she had just gotten done with um, some rehab. And so we were out on this, on this run, and we were coming up on this big hill by our house. And she was like, I don't know if I can do this. And I'm like, don't worry, I'll be right with you. We got this. Let's do this. And we ran up this hill, and it was really hard. And we got to the top, and we went down the other side, and then we were approaching another smaller hill. And she was like, and she just pulled up. She was like, <gasps> you know. And she's looking at this hill, and she's like, ah. Like, I don't know if I can do it, you know. And I pulled up next to her, and I'm like, and I'm like, it's okay, it's all right. And I go, take a minute. And I said, hey, before we look forward, let's look back. And we looked back at, the, at that big hill that we just crushed, right? And I said, you know what? You didn't think you could do that hill, and you did it. Like, I was right with you the whole way. We, we worked through it. You got over it. Here you are. And then I said, now look at that hill. And we looked at it, and I said, you got that. I'm not going anywhere. You just did that. We got that. And what did we do? We ran through the hill. We, we made it. We did our whole run. It was fine. She had to work through it mentally, but we did it. The shepherd will sustain us through every hill, every valley, every left, every right. He's seen, just look back on your life, and you can see many times ways that God has worked things together for good, that when you were in that season, you're like, I have no clue how this is going to work out. And then later on, you're like, oh, all right. Faith is trusting that the same God who's been shepherding you all along is the same God who will be with you every step of the way. That He will sustain you through difficult times. He'll sustain your faith. The fifth thing that he promises to do is the shepherd will be your rest. Be your rest. Matthew eleven twenty eight to 30. I think this is probably most of ours at this juncture of the Christmas season. This is a nice piece of scripture, right? Come to me, all who labor and heavy laden. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your, you say it, souls. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. There's lots of things in this world we go to for rest. We might go to this thing for mental rest, this thing for emotional rest, this thing for physical rest. Only Jesus can bring you into a state of soulful rest. Soulful rest is where there is a, it, it's sort of being in the pocket, right? Like the eye of the storm. Lots of things can be happening around you. But there's this soulful rest when you're within and next to Him where who you are fundamentally and in your identity, you know, just as we sang about earlier in worship, it is well with my soul. My body might be falling apart. I might be struggling with something mentally. Something might be ripping my heart apart. But in this space, Jesus says, I can give you rest for your soul. All is well. Jesus doesn't say, as the shepherd, that he's just going to guide you to things in this world of rest. Like vacations, or just your couch, or just this or this. Are those things awesome? Yeah. But Jesus is promising you as his sheep something far greater. And he's saying, I'm not just going to bring you to a place of rest. I will be your rest. This is an avenue I think a lot of Christians, a lot of those following Jesus, I think we could take them up on this promise a little more often. Some of you might just be out of practice. Maybe right now you're like, I don't even know where to start with that one. Well, it's all the same ways that he guides you. Because he's going to guide you to a place of rest. So where do you start? You start by talking to him. Jesus, I don't know what this rest for my soul looks like, but it sounds awesome. Would you guide me there? Maybe it's getting into the Word. 
I know something in my life during um, all of COVID when, when church was shut down and we were just doing online worship. I had a one thing that was very sustaining for me, and I know it was from the hand of God, is we still had to shoot worship services just online. So I was here, and then I would do the sermon for the camera, but the band was here too, and they would play for online. But that meant I got to sit and just listen to worship music. I cannot even tell you how that sustained my soul through a tough time. But that's what the shepherd does. That's how he, that's how he, he led me as his sheep, but he, he knows us. So he'll guide you and he will sustain you. And the final thing he promises is he will protect you. Amazing verse from Micah 5.4. And he shall stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of Yahweh, in the majesty of the name of Yahweh our God, and they will dwell secure. For now he shall be great to the ends of the earth. Man, you don't have a wimpy, weak shepherd, by the way. Your shepherd is strong strong shepherd. He can handle anything this world throws your way. John 16, 33. Yep, you will suffer a lot, but take heart, I've overcome the world. There is nothing this world can bring your way that Jesus is not, I'm bigger than that. I got that. Stay close to me. You try to fight it, might not go well. Stay close to me though. Even death itself, Jesus says, I'll walk you right through it. It can't touch you because it did because I rose again. You have a shepherd who, no matter what comes your way, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, he promises that he knows us, he'll guide us, sustain us, give us rest, and protect us. As he's been there all along, he will promise to always be there until his goal is accomplished and he's brought you safe and sound into his kingdom. The world was full of unknowns, uncertainties, and anxiousness in 2021. And guess what? It will continue. That's not going away. It's full of unknowns, uncertainties, and things we can't control. But part of being a sheep, control what you can control and trust God. Have faith in the things you can't control. I can't control a pandemic. We can't control if we get fired. I can't control if someone gets sick. I can't control. There's lots of things way beyond my control. But what can I control? I can control if I'm, if I'm in the Word. I can control if I'm going to God in prayer. I can control how I talk to others, how I love others, how I serve others. Those are things within my control. So as the sheep, we can control that we are hearing the voice of our shepherd. We're obeying the voice of our shepherd. We're staying close to our shepherd and trusting him. We can control that. So, as we march in to 2022, what would it look like if personally all of us made a resolution? Resolution is just, I'm resolute in this. That as I walk into 2022, I'm going to do so as a sheep. I'm going to walk with my shepherd. I'm going to take that seriously. More serious than I take the internet. More serious than I take my phone. More serious than I take my shows. More serious than I take sports. Even more serious than I take my job or my kids. Maybe even my spouse. What would that look like to take it so seriously that I want, to, I want to be connected to my shepherd? I want to talk to my shepherd. I want my shepherd to talk to me. That I want that rest, that peace, that joy that he has for me. What would that look like for your 2022? Well, I'm telling you, the promise is there for all of us. So as we step into it, just know this, that Jesus loves each and every one of you and he loves your family. And I pray that you be encouraged, empowered, and comforted by the reality that Jesus is your good shepherd and he will be with you every step of the way. Amen? Amen.